DuPont Innovation lowers LCOE by increasing cell efficiencies and system lifetime while reducing total system cost. Materials matter. That is, for me, the show of industry. Hello and welcome to this week's newscast, which comes from the PV industry's largest trade event, the Shanghai New Energy Conference, or SNEC, in China. It was no surprise that the trade war between the EU and China was a major talking point in Shanghai last week. With much to play for, industry experts give insight into the latest developments and explain what is required to prevent further trade war expansion. What's interesting is in, that in the last few days, a number of the member states have come out with statements um, focusing on this particular issue, with the German Chancellor Angela Merkel maintaining um, her line that she uh, endorsed here during her visit a few months ago to China, that uh, she felt there should be more of a negotiated uh, settlement rather than just in uh, in introducing tariffs. Um, I understand as well that the UK has come out and said that um, it is also in favour of a negotiated settlement rather than moving forward with tariffs. But the whole process is running um, at the moment and we as uh, and myself as a board member of the European Photovoltaic Industry Association encourage people to wait for the process uh, to uh, get to a certain point where the member state consultation has completed and then the Commission will come out with the results of that process. We support a rules-based trading system and so these trading cases they're part of that but there's a missing component and governments aren't utilizing it and they need to and that is collaboration and negotiations which is as important as an important part of the global trading system as litigation is. The European case has the potential to have a, a much more severe impact on certainly the European market and then as a follow through effect the global market. Uh, the reason for that is that in the United States the scope of the investigation was defined relatively narrowly. So cells from China. My understanding from what's going to come out of the EC is that the scope is going to be much broader and it's going to cover wafer cells and modules from China. Basically anything on the PV supply chain that touches China. We've already seen uh, in India, India has initiated an anti-dumping case against the United States. Um, and we're seeing the growth of trade litigation around the world. Uh, you have WTO case challenging India's local content requirement. You just had the WTO appellate panel uh, confirm the initial decision that Canada's local content requirement uh, violated Canada's trade obligations. So certainly a, a growth of litigation around the world. Now, the growth of litigation means that countries are using the rules. But again, what they're not using is uh, they're not trying to find negotiated settlements, collaborated settlements. And I think we think that's critically important that that enter the conversation. The impact of the EU tariffs would be uh, larger or significantly larger than the American one. Um, and uh, well, we are still expect uh, uh, that it will not happen, but uh, the Chinese multi manufacturers are also getting prepared for the worst. So uh, they might be able to uh, uh, develop new plants outside of China. And uh, so I don't think Chinese modules will be uh, uh, completely out of Europe, even with the tariffs. We as a global solar community have to work together to ensure that the whole global solar industry returns to profitability um, so that the industry can invest in updating technologies and production technologies. And we have to achieve that globally, yeah? not just in Asia. We have to ensure that that's going to happen in, in Europe and in North America as well. The latest update to this fast-moving story is that America's Solar Energy Industries Association has expressed its support for the U.S. government's role as a mediator in negotiations to resolve the anti-dumping case. The U.S. is rumored to have bought an offer to suspend its own duties on Chinese exports to the negotiating table, while setting both a quota on Chinese exports and a minimum price for solar products. 
Of course, the trade war is having an impact on industry trends as markets shift from the west to the east. Our second story from SNEC takes a snapshot of the latest market outlooks from leading analysts and highlights the strong downstream market growth expected in Asia over the next few years. The big growth will be here in Asia. That's very clear. We see China, as I mentioned, moving forward. Uh, Japan is perking up rather nicely. Um, we see uh, new policies coming in in places like Thailand uh, and some larger projects going in there. So I'm very encouraged about the opportunity for market growth in this particular uh, part of the world here in Asia. We do see upside potential both in China and in Japan. So uh, the, uh, t globally, the uh, total demand might not be uh, that bad in 2013. We actually forecast uh, uh, a higher growth rate in 2013 versus 2012. So uh, things are getting better. Um, and especially in China, I think uh, if the government uh, uh, policies which we are uh, expected to be released uh, by the end of May, early June time. If it turns out to be positive, I think the market can be uh, uh, bigger than we uh, previously forecast. Due to the tariff cut in Europe, we do forecast a, uh, a downturn in Europe in terms of demand. However, the uh, growth in Asia and also emerging markets uh, will be able to more than compensate that decline. Uh, and we also see further growth after 2013 in these regions. Uh, the fastest growth region would be South Africa. Uh, and uh, uh, I think in, uh, collectively, the Middle East and uh, Africa market will be able to reach one gigawatt level in 2013. The return to profitability is the key issue currently for many of the solar companies. The last, over the last six quarters, we are seeing neg negative results for many. So the question is how and when can companies return to profitability? Our response is that we are seeing currently the supply-demand situation coming to the bottom. We have over capacities, but we are seeing that capacities are not built out in the way that demand is increasing. So it'll take a little bit more time, so we'll Probably at the end of winter, spring will come, but it will take a probably one to two more quarters before we are seeing improvements in the margins. Demand in terms of installations is coming. We seeing last year, or we have seen last year, 31 gigawatt of installations. We expect 35 this year. Demand is coming from key markets like Japan, China, and also U.S. Overall, it's also a trend that new countries are opening up, emerging markets. However, the volumes to be used in these markets are still in the 100 megawatts, not in the gigawatts. Remarkably, the world's largest PV energy provider, First Solar, exhibited its snack for the first time this year. Having made earlier forays into the Chinese market, we ask why the thin film leader is back and looking for business. The company's strategy is that you know, we are now moving downstream into different international markets. And China is one of the largest markets, probably the largest market in the next four or five years. We are seeing each year the growth in terms of you know, the solar install capacity is between 10 to 12 gigawatt per year. You just cannot find any other countries that can compete with that. Um, it is a complex uh, market, many driving forces, but we are um, positive and we are quietly confident that you know, our strategy looking into China, supporting China's wants and needs in developing a low carbon economy, we believe we've got the right strategy to, to support that. And with this massive market, we are, um, we are very positive in what we are doing. This is slightly different from a couple of years ago. Um, you know, now in China, all the, the key energy policies are in place. The fit-in tariff are in place. So, you know, we all sense that this is the period of time that the growth would be uh, really strong. And we're here for that. That's all for this week. Full coverage of these interviews and many more will be available on the PV Tech website soon. In the meantime, be sure to keep up to date with all the very latest solar news via our Twitter feed. Thanks for watching.